Hello and welcome to the next episode of my series, Subtractive Synthesis on Various Synthesizers. In this episode, we're going to be using the Base Station 2 as a way to explore the Mixer section. So to recap, last episode we used a modular synthesizer to try and understand the signal flow of a synth, and we used only the oscillator, or we used the oscillator and a standard signal flow like you would find in a normal synth and a not modular synth. And we listened to the timbral possibilities that that gave us. Today, we're using the Novation Base Station 2. And we are going to start with an init patch and see how far we can get using only the oscillator section and the mixer section. So what is a mixer? To recap, a mixer is a part of a synthesizer that combines multiple signals. Typically these signals would be the oscillators, in this case we have two, and sometimes other sources such as ring modulation, which is something like multiplying two signals together, and noise. So let me talk about where the sections of this synthesizer lie. First, we have the oscillator section. In this case, one set of knobs controls oscillator one and oscillator two, which feeds into the mixer section. The mixer section includes a sub oscillator, which is an oscillator with a more limited number of waveforms that sounds one or two octaves below oscillator one. We have the second oscillator volume control, and a knob that allows us to adjust the gain for external input, the ring modulator output, and the noise output. Just in case it's unclear, this is a synthesizer with presets. So what that means is at this stage, where you see the knobs may not correspond to the actual parameter values in use. Anyway, moving on, the mixer feeds into the filter. So in this case, the filter has various parameters, but we're going to be using the basic um, low pass and we're going to be using the default setting, which would be the low pass fully open. The VCA is not shown on the panel and is typically not shown on the panel, but it is fed by a pair of envelopes. So these envelopes are normally routed to the amplifier, that's the VCA, and to the uh, mod envelopes, which can go to either the filter or to the pitch of the oscillator. Again, we're not diving into that yet. This is the LFO section. This is what is referred to as the effect section. There is a distortion and a filter FM control. And then we have some modulation possibilities. Um, they're secondary functions of the keys and they adjust various routings for the mod wheel and the aftertouch or the pressure that the keyboards um, provides. In any case, let's dig into the oscillator and mixer sections. So first, oscillator one. What options do we have? Let me play a note. So this is the coarse tuning knob. It allows us to adjust the tuning of this oscillator all the way from plus 12 octave, a 12 semitones or one octave over the note I play, down to minus 12. So this gives us a way of making broad movements, especially when used in conjunction with another oscillator, we can generate harmonies. Additionally, that's a coarse large range knob. We have a fine tune. So this adjusts in cents. So 100 cents is one semitone up, minus 100 cents is one semitone down. So we have the capacity to, in hundredths of a semitone, fine tune the pitch. We haven't introduced envelopes and LFOs just yet, so I'm gonna skip over these next two knobs, but we do have a pulse width knob, which can be manually configured. But you may notice it doesn't appear to do anything. Why? Because on this synthesizer, unlike on the synthesizer I was using previously, the only wave shaping option in the oscillator section is for the pulse wave. So now we're on the pulse wave. So if I turn this, I can achieve some of that.
PWM pulse width modulation kind of sound, which is in itself quite interesting. Let's look at the second oscillator. And what I'm going to do is turn the first one down in the mixer, turn the second one up in the mixer. So we're only listening to the second oscillator. So this is a saw wave. I've shown you the pulse slash square wave. We have a sine wave and a triangle wave. So let's experiment with the triangle wave. We have this range parameter here. The range is described as a footage and these footages refer to pipe lengths in pipe organs. Effectively, the longer the pipe, the lower the pitch. What's referred to as concert pitch, which is the tuning A440, meaning A4 notes on the keyboard corresponds to a 440 hertz frequency, corresponds to the eight foot. So if I... So you can hear as I adjust the footage, it gets higher or lower pitched. So let's experiment with this. This is higher pitched, but note because a triangle wave has less harmonic content than a um, saw wave or square wave, it sounds quieter. This is normal. I'm going to gradually turn up oscillator one. So now we have the oscillator one pulse wave, which I can modulate by hand. Alongside um, the triangle wave of oscillator two played one octave higher in the four footage range. Finally, we have a sub oscillator here. The sub oscillator can be one octave or two octave below. I'm gonna turn oscillators one and two down and we're just going to listen to the sub oscillator. I'm going to turn it up. So this is the sine wave. This is a narrow pulse wave. You can hear the more buzzy thin sound. And this is a square wave, has more of a fundamental and more of that lower harmonic content. So let's try the sine wave. Let's turn up oscillator one. Turn up oscillator two. So we have something which sounds relatively full, but we haven't messed, uh, experimented with all of the parameters here. So two of the parameters we still have to explore are the ring modulator, the noise source, and the possibility of detuning the oscillators with respect to one another. So let's try detuning oscillator two. One of the ways you might choose to detune it is a fine amount. So let's listen to that. So you can hear the pitch change. I'm gonna change oscillator one to a... And you can hear a sort of pulsing going on. This is a type of phase cancellation that's happening between the waves. The other thing that I could do is I could use the coarse tuning to tune to an interval. At the moment, I have the two oscillators an octave apart. I'm gonna try tuning this down. Um, sorry, not coarse, uh, fine tune. Coarse tuning it down, five semitones. So now the triangle wave is a fifth above the original sound. The reason it's a fifth above, a fifth would be up seven semitones, but I have it tuned an octave up. So five semitones down is the same as seven semitones up. So this is a fifth sound. There is a fifth relationship between the triangle wave and the, and the pulse wave. Turn it down. Okay, so the other thing that we haven't experimented with beyond the detune that I mentioned is the noise source. So let's listen to some noise. Let's turn these down for now, just so we can listen to it in isolation. So notice the noise is unaffected by the pitch that I play. Let's listen to the ring modulator output. And let's try detuning one of these waves
So as I said, you can think of ring modulation as multiplication or amplitude modulation between the waves. So it really accentuates any detune that's there. So let's now try combining the different elements of the sound that we've created here. So let's have just a little bit of ring mod, a little bit of noise, plenty of the triangle, a little bit of the sub sign, and a bit of the pulse wave. So. So, we've now utilized some of the features of the mixer to combine the oscillators in different ways, to bring in a sub-oscillator, to add some ring modulation, and to add some noise. This allows us a lot more flexibility than we had. Let's think about what a lead sound might sound like specifically. So I'm going to reinitialize this patch. So in fact, listening to just the saw wave isn't a thousand miles away from a lead sound from my perspective. I think possibly it could do with a bit more um, weight, you might say. So I would like to bring in some sub oscillator. Let's listen. Okay, so I added some square wave sub oscillator. Um, let's listen to, I like saw wave for a lead. Let's experiment with a second oscillator here. So the second oscillator is at the same pitch of the first oscillator, which I think is acceptable for a lead sound. So my course tune could be um, zero. But let's try and detune. Okay, so we wanted a lead sound. Because we're not yet using the filter, this is a very bold lead sound but it should be a playable lead sound. So let's experiment. Let's use the mod wheel pitch bend. So hopefully you can see that even though the oscillator is more simplistic than the oscillator that I used in the modular synthesizer, having two of them and having a mixer section which allows us to add some more interest, let's bring in a bit of ring mod for example, bit of noise. So we've been able to go from a relatively simple set of components and building blocks and build a sound which is in this case a detuned buzzy saw lead which I think or I hope you will agree is more interesting than the init patch and we have managed to achieve without utilizing explicitly the filter, the envelopes, the LFO, or any of the other modulation features of the synthesizer. I hope this gives you a feel for what the mixer section is, when and why you must use the mixer section, and how the oscillators work together to give you a range of different sounds. In the next episode, we'll come back and look at using the filter and then we'll build upon that by using the envelope generators. And by the time we're utilizing the envelope generators, I think you'll find we'll go from these buzzy, brash sounds, which are completely gated and square, to something which is a lot more musical and usable. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you come back to watch the rest of the series. But for now, goodbye.